In Islam, we don't have what is called a Sabbath. The word Sabbath uh, actually comes from the word uh, Sabt. In Arabic, the word Sabt means seventh. And so Yom al-Sabt in, in Arabic is called Saturday. So on the basis of that, we know that um, the Sabbath uh, was originally Saturday, not Friday, not Sunday. Um, the, the Christian church, 300 and some odd years after Jesus Christ, they adopted Sunday because Sunday was the day that the pagans used to worship the sun. So since that was the day that the pagans or the Romans and the Greeks used to acknowledge a day of holiness, they took the name of Jesus Christ and the faith of Jesus Christ and they applied it for that day. When they, and so they called their day of worship Sunday. And then the Christian um, civilization just adopted that. As a matter of fact, all those days that we're acknowledging, Sunday, Monday is called Moon Day, Tuesday is, is another day, Wednesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is Thor's Day. That's another God. And you know, so all of these days that we're using are, are from the Gregorian, Greek, Roman calendar, which is evidence of their pagan practices. As a matter of fact, there's a group of Christians who do not accept Sunday and they call themselves the Seventh-day Adventists. Okay, and that's why the Seventh-day Adventists, they are worshiping on Saturday. But now we as Muslims, when the Prophet Muhammad came with his revelation, we were given the order to worship on a day called Friday, but it's in Arabic it's not Friday, it's called Jum'ah. Jum'ah means a day of gathering. So what we were ordered to do is, at noontime, or approximately thereof, on Friday, the Muslim men especially, are ordered to stop their work, stop their business, stop their occupations, and go and pray in congregation. Now that congregational prayer on Friday only takes probably maybe half an hour, 45 minutes at the most. And after that, we can eat, drink, work, earn money. So there's nothing, no restrictions, but we are ordered to stop on Juma and go pray. Now for the women, if they want to pray Juma, they can, it's optional. But the, the, the rationale behind women not having to do it is that if the women also were ordered to go make Juma, what would happen to the children? What would happen to the home? So in Islam, we do worship uh, um, a Sabbath in the sense that that day becomes binding on us to stop, to worship God, to pray, to listen to some admonition. But afterwards, God says, Fan tashiru fil ard. Go to the earth and benefit from whatever you want to benefit. So after the Juma prayer is over, we can work, we can eat, we can resume whatever it is that we have to. And so for us, there's no one particular day that we have to stop. And the other thing is that the Christians were doing this by this covenant, that on the basis that God created the heavens and the earth in six periods or six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Well, we reject that concept because resting is not an attribute of God. God's work doesn't, it's not like our work. It's not like after God created the heavens and the earth where he did some tremendous work, then God needs to sit back and take a breather and drink some lemonade or whatever the case might be. It's not like that. So we don't have this concept of God that he needed rest. But we do believe, and our Quran says, that God created the heavens and earth in six periods. And after that, he settled on the throne. But settling on his throne means that God is on his throne. We don't say he's on his throne like I'm sitting in a chair. He's on his throne according to his majesty. We cannot imagine what that is. But after six periods, he created the heavens and the earth. He completed that work, and after that, he settled on the throne. We don't add anything to the meaning of that, but we don't have a, actually a Sabbath in Islam. Let's answer your first question, sister.